All right, Chelsea fans, welcome back to another episode. That's right, the London is Blue podcast, hopefully your favorite Chelsea podcast. And look, no Brandon here today. I'm fresh off of some vacation vibes, and we got Nick here. This is a pre-4th of July recording, dropping on the 4th. So for those of you in the U.S., enjoy America's birthday. Happy Independence Day. Uh, Please do not lose a digit while enjoying the festivities. And, you know, enjoy uh, some smoked... Or, you know, grilled meats or non-meats if you're of, uh, you know, a uh, non-carnivore lifestyle uh, like yourself, Nick. That's right. Uh, Famously don't like meats over here. So uh, that's that's 100 percent true. Uh, Yeah, look. uh, Yeah, I I think we're at the beginning now of of official silly season. We've had pre-silly season in June. Lots happened. Feels like last Friday really upped the ante quite significantly with player notices on the old uh, Chelsea FC app and lots more rumors and stuff like that. And I, I think it was, you know, just like you would in any other business, Dan, end of the fiscal year, have to get all your books in order, have to make sure those I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And now it's a, it's kind of a fresh start for the, uh, for the 2023, 2024 season already. And uh, that's, yeah, we got one month right. off. That was basic. That was it. Yeah, we've already reset our clocks and calendars because the new year has started. We run our year off of the most important calendar in the world, the FIFA transfer calendar. Jake, play Odd Lang Syne, please, right now. It's the new year, baby. But look, we have a packed show for you today. We're going to talk about the continued squad overhaul, the reboot that is taking place in SW6 with incomings and outgoings. Pochettino had his very first day of class. We're going to talk about how it got down at Cobham with a wonderful interview that our good friend of the Podley Parker conducted with him to encapsulate the first day. And then also a few bits of assorted news. We're going to jump into it. But first, we just want to say thank you so much for your support. Again, we're the independent Chelsea podcast. We are not any type of big media funded by ESPN or the like. We're here recording episodes to keep you updated on the club. And the best way to support us is through Patreon. Patreon.com slash London Blue Pod. You leave five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It doesn't cost you anything to do that really helps people find the show and look we have hit twenty four thousand subscribers on youtube we put ourselves with a goal before the summer tour of hitting twenty five thousand. and look it takes less than eight or nine percent of you listening to this episode right now to go to youtube and subscribe to the channel for free again a free thing that you can do that helps the podcast out helps you more people find it the video we posted of nicholas jackson signing the cfc special special that we put out sam's wonderful video almost up to ten thousand views alone just in the last couple of days so keep that in mind super way to help out the podcast but nick the squad overhaul it's happening we have officially gone players. We have gone pending announcements. We have some who've officially arrived. They've been photographed in Chelsea shirts, which is always a good sign. We have people who are supposedly going to be leaving in the short order. We have incomings that have happened or are about to happen, but some of them are not necessarily for the first team. And then there's still work to do. So very much a situation where Stewart and Win Stanley, co-sporting directors, still have a lot of work to get done. Even though with the officially gone list of Havertz, Conte, Kolobali, Kovacic, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, and Mendy, the work has begun in earnest and the money is coming back into Chelsea's bank accounts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Friday was as, as much of a whirlwind day and that, that was the 30th of June as I think we've seen in some time. I mean, a lot of these names, your Havertz and your uh, Loftus-Cheeks and your Mendy's and your Kovacic's had been rumored to leave but it seems like the deals all got done last week. And so those five are already off the books. There's a ton that could still leave. I think we've counted that if everyone on the radar to leave leaves, it could be up to 14 or 15 players that leave this summer. And Matt brought this up on the on the Matt Law special last week that it may be the biggest departure season of a Premier League club in history. Just not... And not a club that goes down and gets relegated, but that's staying in the Premier League. Like, it's a it's a really insane thing what's happening here, you know. And I, I think we'd be remiss to say, like, you know, especially for 
your Loftus Cheeks and your Mendes and, and the guys who are leaving with good vibes attached. It, it was a little emotional last week. You know, I, it, it, it's not just because of their individual stories. I think it's this collection of stories together that, you know, even if you see it coming, it doesn't make it easier when it happens, right? I mean, a guy like Loftus Cheek, who's been at the club for 19 years, like that is, it's a story we we all wish ended differently, right? It, it's same with Mendy, I think. Same with Havertz, even or or especially Conte. Some some real fan favorites have left the club, and this squad overhaul is now in overdrive. I mean, this is going to be a remarkably different team uh, this year than it was last year, or any time in the last really the decade that that we've seen this team kind of go and, and achieve greatness. And so uh, I've just kind of had to help myself reset a little bit because it's just, it's a lot of change happening quickly. Yeah. On the day, if they were healthy, you're talking about three to four players there who are, would have been a starter in the team. So you're talking about thousands of Premier League minutes that have just disappeared from the existing roster, which is a good thing. We've talked about this before, that Chelsea have needed to reduce the size of the, a size of the squad significantly to make it easier for Pochettino to run the side the way that he wants this coming season. So this work, all very positive. Some incredible deals, like getting Havertz to Arsenal for the fee that we got there, getting money back for players that didn't necessarily have a pathway, and then, like Kulabali, unblock something with Levi Colwell coming back, which puts the club in a very positive position as they look to extend or slash renew his contract ahead of any type of issue or consideration, which was where we ended up in a situation with Mason Mount, all signs pointing to Manchester United, medical and official confirmation, likely at this point, or coming at some point this week. That's done. That's something as we won't kind of move on anymore because any other thing to talk about is that you know we now have brought in two attackers nick in jackson and hunku that gives us some additional stability in the attacking play in the forward line and so you know we have others that are going to likely come in you know we know that chelsea are still going after a midfielder we know that chelsea are still going after a goalkeeper and we know that chelsea are still looking at not just an attacking midfielder or an attacking presence, but it's Moises Caicedo, who's the you know, name and the target that everyone seems to still think a deal will materialize there for the player. Yeah, I don't know. I, like, there are a bunch of people online who will tell you all sorts of different things. I, I think you guys know uh, which sources we trust um, <clears throat> when it comes to reporting, and it's not a ton of the fake blue check marks on Twitter now. So do with that information what you will. I mean, if you look at the midfield, and I tweeted this last week when uh, the Kovacic and Conte and, and then Mount News kind of all hit at once, there aren't that many people left in that midfield. I mean, you, you really look at it, it's it's Enzo and, uh, and, and maybe you slot – Connor back as a six, uh, but uh, other than that, it's 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 very very thin. I mean, you're going to have to go replace these guys, or or slot in Lewis Hall, or slot in Chukwemeka, or figure out a, a formation that works. Uh, if if you aren't able to go get a high profile, uh, do it all sort of midfielder like Casado, and and so now that the fiscal year has restarted, getting that done is critical because. We don't have a num- we don't have a, a complement right now in the team for Enzo. And if we don't have a complement for him, that means that he's not allowed to do the Enzo things that we need Enzo to do, uh, i.e. Uh, take the ball at field, make critical passes, make key passes in the final third, assist, you know, goals and, and show the magic that we know that he has in his boots. Um, so... Yeah, there, there's also rumors of, of Romeo Labia, of course, still. Um, but not, like I think in addition to Caicedo, I think Caicedo's pretty far down the the road at this point. So 
You're going to have to go find some backup here, Dan. I mean, I, I am actually more worried about the midfield now than I was before these departures because you sold a bunch of people. And unless you're really trusting your academy to step up and, and fill in some of those roles, there's going to have to be some purchases made. There's no other way around it. Well, we know that Santos is one who'll be coming back, that the club seemingly feel like can be a part of the solution for, sure. for Pochettino this summer. So that, that is one additional one who is, in all for all intents and purposes, a new signing, much like the way that Malaguso will be a new signing coming in after being on loan after a purchase was completed in the winter window. So that's something I think we need to kind of consider. There are some additional departures, though, that are still being floated out there some that are more concrete and other it does look like longest tenured first team player of Baba Rahman who is on nine years now after Ruben Loftus-Cheek leaving uh, looks to be having his contract terminated we'd be going to uh, Greece with uh, Pauk as a free agent we have Hakim Ziyech with the terms that fell through on his deal to the Saudi league no necessarily new updates there we have again Nick these these span all flavor of it could be a great thing, like Rahman getting an opportunity to go somewhere else and reignite his career, and ones where it's like Ziesh, where you hope the deal in some capacity would have gotten done because now you have a logjam situation. You're going to have an unhappy player. You're going to have two moves and consecutive windows fall apart, and you need to find some type of exit strategy. Yeah, the Ziesh thing is such a bummer. I mean, uh, when that news came across last week, that was just like the cherry on the shit Sunday that we were all enduring together. I mean, uh, apparently his right knee and right hip have if, have issues um, as far as his fitness goes. And basically the, the reporting that was done is that his personal terms were cut down by like 60% because of that. And that his uh, the, the fee that was rumored was cut down almost to nothing. Uh, because they weren't happy with with his uh, with his fitness or his medical uh, that that took place. So, uh, what a horrific uh, deal that is! But you have to get rid of him at this point. I mean, he was already on the way out in January. He was trying to get out again. You got to find a suitor willing to take him or uh, figure out what the right course of medical action is to get him fit again, so that he can depart the club. Because that's it's, it's just not you, – you don't want a player who doesn't want to be there hanging around the locker room when you're trying to build a new culture, I think, is is the better uh, part of this. And so I'm sure he wants to go. I'm sure you know Chelsea are looking for uh, suitable alternatives for, for him, and I hope that works out because it would just be a colossal bummer for all involved to to have that not go two times in a row. One that was interesting that came out over the weekend with not one but two tweets from David Ornstein talking about Christian Pulisic. And this is interesting to be talking about Captain America, the the American Eagle of uh, Chelsea's football club on the third heading into the fourth. But seeming interest both from AC Milan and Lyon, though Lyon looked to have a more sizable offer. The reporting counter to that is he would prefer the move to AC Milan. I feel like that makes sense. If I had the choice between the two, AC Milan would be where I would want to go as well. But surprising that Chelsea might be able to drum up a little bit of a bidding war and get a move for the player, get some funds back, and be able to reinvest those. It seemingly feels like it's going to be an exit in the week to next week, next two weeks, where Christian Pulisic is not a Chelsea player anymore. Much like Ziyech, much like a bunch of these other names, there there are even more names than we have in this pod that are are on their way out. But yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I, I think we we said this in our in our text to each other that Leon feels like a very odd career move for him at this point. Like you've already been a part of the Bundesliga, you've already been a part of the Premier League. I, I think if you were to give any player the chance to go to Liga or go to Serie A, like there's no doubt in my mind which way you'd want to go um you know so you're uh, you know this is no slander towards league on it's just you know Serie a is a historically great league and it's a lot of fun right now and i think 
based on the way that they play, Christian Pulisic would have a lot of success at Milan. And they're building... I, I think it's interesting, Dan, to look at what Milan's doing and what Chelsea are doing as kind of similar things in two different places where you're trying to rebuild an aging squad with young, exciting talent, right? And I think they're a little further on their evolution maybe than we are. But Pulisic would fit really well there. I mean, you already have rumors of, of Yunus Musa, another U.S. international who's about the same age going uh, to AC Milan. They already got Ruben Loftus cheek They already have Fakayo Tamori. They have a lot of fan favorites. I'm, I'm going to start watching Milan a lot more now. But, uh, but yeah, the, I think the Milan move is a better move. But it, the reporting says that Leon have like 10 million more in the offer than, uh, than Milan do. So, I, you know, at some point, Chelsea may have to take a business decision or uh, do some sort of player exchange. If at all any Italian club would want to participate in such a thing, oh, what God. are the odds? Man, as we as we talk about that, we did see news that Cesar Spoqueta, who looked to be going to Inter, a bit of a twist in that story with Atletico Madrid coming in and look likely, per all reporting, Fabrizio is how I had the most on this with Atletico Madrid beating out Inter Milan to get Azpilicueta to join the side. This feels like a funny one, just because of the next name that we're going to talk about here, which, if we mentioned Inter, should be no surprise to people, with Lukaku, because that seems like the only end solution for either side, is that something is going to happen that at least puts Lukaku in a situation where he is off the books and that Chelsea have a one, two year plus way of getting out of this situation where we're not on the hook for a majority of wage. It's odd. Inter feel like they continue to miss in the window in terms of who they want to go after because they they hold the level in their negotiation, which I think is admirable, but I think there has to be flexibility when you're negotiating in a deal so that all sides can find a common ground. They have no power in the situation whatsoever. Romelu Lukaku has no power in the situation whatsoever. I don't know how many times like we have to say this. He can put out all the press that he wants. That he can't wait to be a part of Inter squad next year, and he hopes to have something done by July 14th and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't fucking matter. You, you signed a huge lucrative contract with Chelsea Football Club, and unless you are willing to personally take a massive, massive, massive pay cut and convince Inter that they need to pony up the 50 million pounds to buy you back essentially after we just gave them 50 million pounds for free, then there's nothing to talk about. And Chelsea can throw him in the U21s or whatever and have him waste away there. I mean, like, I couldn't be more annoyed at this series of headlines that's come out from him and Inter going, there has to be a way. There is. Pay the fucking money. The end. I, what else is there in a transfer agreement? It's ridiculous. In in more uh, in, in more important news though, uh, because the Lukaku thing is just terrible. Uh, As P going to Atletico Madrid makes a hell of a lot more sense. I think that is one that again, all my favorite players have left the club this window, so I'm I'm gonna be looking out for for a new favorite player in the Chelsea team. But uh, I he think is that might one. be a segment. That's a segment idea right there. It's a yeah. star search for, who's, for your new favorite player. Who's going to be Nick's new favorite player? Uh, yeah, Aspi, Angolo, Mason, all of them leaving in the same window really hurts. Aspi hurts a lot. It, I think this one makes the most sense, and I'm certainly going to be sad to see him go. He is everything you'd ever want in a professional footballer, and... You know, long may he uh, continue. And then, you know, he's going to be an incredible manager someday, too, because that's his character. So uh, love him to death. A huge salute. And uh, we're definitely going to miss him around Chelsea. The other thing that we have seen, because we did talk about players are incoming to the first team, Chelsea do continue to sign players for the future. We saw Angelo is rumored to be joining Chelsea from Santos, could be a candidate for Strasbourg. Uh, you had Diego um, Moria, who is joining from Benfica as a free transfer. Moriera. Moriera. Yep. And then Alex Matos, who joins from Norwich City. So just very, you know, again, we've seen now that Blue Co. exists. 
We know that the multi-club model is being stood up with the first club coming from France, the second club most likely in Portugal, and there are going to be players that Chelsea are going to want to put into those clubs to find a path forward for them and eventually bring them into the first team. But it feels as if we will see more of these type of deals over the window. They will not get the same attention that someone like a Jackson or in, in Kunku will get necessarily because those are first teamers and these are for the future. But still good to see that Chelsea are making steps with a part of their global domination footprint. And maybe it's less concerning to us now, but in terms of future sustainability, it is a good thing to see the progress being made here. Yeah, I, I think remember Chelsea are doing two different things at once, or, or as we say in the business, walking and chewing gum, right? They can both go find the right talent for the first team and go find the right future talent as they did in previous in the previous two windows, right? We we saw that happen already. Chukwameka, Santos, Cassidy, all these guys. So, uh, yeah, these are for the future. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of different sporting directors because there are different remits within the recruiting department and all of these guys, whether it's Matuas Francia or it's uh, Alex Matos or Moriera or Angelo or any of the other four or five names that you're going to see Chelsea are building. That's what we do. You can't, you can't just build replace or you can't, you can't just buy and replace all the time. You have to build. Right. And so, uh, you're going to start to see the first waves of that. You know, we hope that Andre Santos is maybe the first, you know, part of that 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 makes it through. But you know, Hutchison played last year, right? Like you're, you're starting to see these guys make an impact. It's a really young squad already, so these guys coming in at 18 when you're buying a 21 year old Nani Matawake, the difference is going to start to become less and less stark. And it's all, I think, with the directive Dan to. Uh, begin to build this young powerhouse that had just has talent for days and sustains itself uh, through either winning or sales or both. Yeah, and the last one in here, because it's not official, but you put it in here as well, Mateus Franca is another individual that the club are looking to sign from Flamenco. It's a little bit of a South American resurgence for the club in terms of the players that we're going after. Uh, this player is Brazilian. Newcastle were interested in him, sounds like, back in the winter window. And it's understood that the negotiations will be around a 20 to 25 million range uh, in euros for for the fee. So, again, multiple names being considered. Lots of movement still to come. We expect more news throughout the week on incomings and outgoings for Chelsea. I would imagine uh, expect multiple tweets, uh, if you can read them, um, about Moises Caicedo and others over the next couple of days. We'll keep on top of this and keep out putting out updates as we get them but look we're gonna take a first ad break i want to thank the sponsors for supporting the show and then we'll be right back to talk about mauricio pochettino's first day at chelsea all right nick we're going to talk about mauricio's first day because it was a wonderful day but you know it's also going to be a wonderful day is if you join us during chelsea's u.s summer tour look we cannot confirm that mauricio pochettino will join us at a live event but we can't not not confirm that. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks for putting that out there, Dan, and, and setting the expectations uh, there. That's great. Look, you're booking the guests. I, I feign ignorance on that one. I'm just saying, in the, in the realm of possibility, anything is possible. It would be it would be an all-time get. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> It'd be an all-time get. But um, yes, Dan, uh, look, we're going uh, big on the summer tour. They... We heard the club are coming over for five matches, and we're going to be at four of the locations. On 718, we're doing a live show at with the Raleigh Durham Blues uh, in uh, in Raleigh right before the open training on the 18th of July. Then we're going to move up to Philly on the 21st, do a live show with the Philly Blues uh, and assorted guests in the atrium of their pub. It's going to be awesome. We're going to move down to Atlanta where the players play on the 25th. And uh, and do a job down there at the at the Fido in, in Buckhead, 
Uh, very excited about that. And then uh, finally finishing up in D.C. on Saturday, the 29th, uh, with our friends, the Beltway Blues, uh, at the Astro Beer Hall. And that place is enormous, so it's going to be a Looks lot of fun. fun. And it's a Saturday. I mean, it's like, what more could you really want? It's a Saturday. Everyone's going to be having a day out. It's going to be awesome. So if you can, please register uh, for a free ticket using our Eventbrite's. Uh, it really will help us out just to like give us a sense of who's coming. We're not going to, you know, ticket or be hard asses for the thing. We just want a whole bunch of people to show up and have fun and be able to communicate about where we're going to be, when we're going to be, when we're going to be starting, all that sort of stuff. So if you can do that, that'd be great. Uh, every place uh, is nearly sold out. So we'll extend those ticketing apparatus as, as we move forward. But very excited to see you guys in like two short weeks already, Dan. This is crazy. <laughs> It's actually terrifying as someone who just came back (laughs) off of vacation that in two weeks we will be starting a summer tour. But might not be as terrifying as the job that Mauricio Pochettino has in front of him. And look, we did finally get our first photos, video, interactive media from the club of Mauricio Pochettino strolling into Cobham. A journey that Nick, you and I know very well, uh, just done with a little bit of different fanfare. And he was uh, quickly started to adorn the uh, Chelsea, the very mint Chelsea Travago training top with the white arms, the gold, uh, the gold text and accents, the black center. Uh, that, that is a very nice training kit. Uh, yeah. I think I think people are going to be buying a lot of training gear this year. Uh, that's my prediction based on what I've seen so far. Because yeah, mint is the right way to put it. It looks phenomenal. You know, it's a it's a great sponsor and partner, uh, as DPZ will will attest to. Uh, Trivago all the way, and uh, yeah, I mean it was it's. I, I think Matt put it correctly last week. It it feels like because this announcement was made right after the season right in may that it kind of has faded into the background and it was like an injection into your arm today of like oh yeah this guy's here now like we've talked we've talked about him in like a different context than we are right now which is like he's actually here training starts tomorrow right like they're he's going to start to welcome in the players he's going to start to communicate his ideas he's going to get a staff in place all this sort of stuff and it was kind of a refreshing uh, point to, to kind of remember that there's a lot going on there, right? So great to see him looking suave in the black suit and then the training gear. And uh, the interview that he did basically hit on all of the, uh, I think, all of the best things that he could have hit on today, if you're a fan. Yeah, and again, massive credit to Lee Parker, who always does a phenomenal job with the player interviews, and at least in this past season, got plenty of opportunity to hone his skill on managerial first day interviews. This one, hopefully, it is the one and only manager interview that he needs to conduct for this season, um, at least for the men's first team. Uh, you know, obviously, I have to conduct uh, multiple interviews with the multiple managers of the multiple squads under Chelsea's full infrastructure. But, Nick, it was one quote that set Spurs supporters off within Chelsea is the greatest team in England, full stop from Pochettino. And again, I know you mentioned it as this thing of like, look, it's this type of stuff you have to say. It's a little bit of a PR masterclass. It's hitting all the right notes to make you feel warm and fuzzy. But come on, even you, even you had to feel like, yeah, I'm a little excited now. I'm just a little more excited than I was yesterday. Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, I because I work in advertising, like I'm, I'm just a more conditioned to this stuff than maybe some other people are. And so uh, if you were one of the people who got really happy about that today, I'm not taking anything away from you. I think it's like a prerequisite that you have to say that it's a new job. Um, I think what I was more excited about was how he described his process, his methodology and all the things that Lee kind of questioned him about. And uh, more, you know, kind of as an overarching viewpoint on the interview, so much charisma to it and like a steady confidence that he speaks with and, and a, a cadence that tells you that he's in control of a situation, that he knows exactly what he's doing. And I know that's making, you know, if, if you're 
you're an Office Space fan, I know I might be jumping to different conclusions on a match, if you will, but I, I just uh, I kind of got some Mourinho vibes out of it. I don't know if that if you got the same, but it was uh, it was a very uh, calm, cool, collected sort of uh, first day at Chelsea. Relaxed. It was relaxed. Seemed to be very upbeat, high energy, light yeah. in the sense that there weren't a whole lot of specifics. But I, I do think we want to run through some of the quotes because they help, I think, paint the picture. You can watch the whole video on the Chelsea YouTube channel or on ChelseaFC.com or the Fifth Stand app. All of the contents there. I think a couple of the ones that I pulled out, Nick, were you know, about the history. I think it's always one that you know people want to understand if a manager understands the history, how they frame that history within England and with the within Europe in particular. Pochettino's response was that I think it's important and it's a culture of winning. Last 10, 12, 15 years, Chelsea's the greatest team in England. I know the Premier well, the Premier League and that the culture of Chelsea means. I think our fans are excited to again be on the road to trying to win. Of course, we're excited. We're excited to work with a very young young team, underlines that, with a different approach than in the past, also underline that. But I think we need to all understand that we have to work really hard and create a very good atmosphere at the training ground to build success for the team in the next few years. This maybe comes on the back of news last week that we had heard reporting around players not even wanting to run in training at points last season. This, to me, feels like a, a good opening kind of salvo type of answer that helps just to to set the stage for a lot of future things that are going to be coming in the next few weeks around the desire to win to instill mentality and identity and to really create that training regimen that we know that again matt wrote a wonderful piece about it that the training regimen that is going to be expected of these players which from all intents and purposes, as we understand, is going to be radically different and much improved from what we saw under Potter, Lampard, and, and, and others last season. Tugel, yeah. Um, I, th- I think the cliff notes for his interview, and it's it's certainly worth watching the whole thing and kind of putting it into context because Lee does a great job. But character, culture, he says atmosphere, but I think atmosphere means culture and, and the way that he's trying to contextualize it. Leadership, accountability, trust, and family. I think those were the things that I pulled out of his interview. And for me, uh, you know, this is the sorts of components that you need to create, you know, an environment that you can win within. And, you know, I think building that culture, again, it's not going to be an overnight project. Right. It's going to take time. It's going to take time for players who are not quite yet bought in to buy in. It's going to take results to get that sort of buy in. It's going to take, you know, the right sorts of, uh, I think, training exercises and chances given and stuff like that to really get everyone there. It's going to take a while. Right. So if you're if you're looking for a quick fix rebuilding a culture is a multi-year process. Um, it doesn't mean that there can't be re- immediate results that come with it. It just means that that, f- that final article, as Matt has described, you know, his work previously at other places, uh, I will not name the other, the other place in which those fans are upset right now, but it's, it took a while for those players to buy in for those players to trust him. And, you know, we can hope that it's a bit of a quicker process, that it doesn't take five years or whatever to, to get that across the line. But I I think I'm just tempering my own expectations, Dan, on what it will mean for him. Like, of course, there's a lot of excitement. Of course, there's new players coming in. Of course, you know, there's all the components that Chelsea fans have become conditioned to to be really excited about and, and to frankly think that we're going to go challenge for, for titles again. But... I think this project's a little bigger than just how do we get back into the Champions League next year. A lot of developmental players on the squad as well. You look at Matawake, Mikhail Mudrik, both having really strong uh, under-21 uh, World Cups and how they're playing. You've gotten some some uh, Euros, rather. Um, so you definitely see that there's a lot of talent for Pochettino to work with here. I, I did like when... Lee asked a question about objectives for this season. 
he said it in a way that did give him some latitude into what the, the what the true definition of this might mean, what the backdoor definition of success might be from uh, the sporting directors to Pochettino. But his answer was the objective is to win because football is about winning. We have good times, create good relationships, have a nice environment and relationship with people. But the most important thing in the end is to win. If you win, it helps develop all the other things. Football is about results. How you achieve that is different because we are people that care about the way we achieve the results. But in the end, we want to win. Be competitive. Be animals that want to compete every week and in every game. But we need to translate before on the training ground and train in this way. So bringing it back to the fact that if we're not training to win – there's no likelihood that this team will win. And again, just further reinforcing the point that this training period, which we are going to see some of in the next couple of weeks on the U.S. Summer Tour, is going to be very, very interesting and telling. Yeah, I think we've said this multiple times. We were there for the first Antonio Conte training regimen. Um, we got to see that live and live in color in Minneapolis in our third season of, of the podcast. They, the players were dead during that period. They were doing two-a-days. They were doing tons of different training and conditioning drills. We saw Eden Hazard running sprints until, you know, he, he looked like he was ready to pass out. I mean, there, there is going to be some serious work that comes. But we also know that that Antonio Conte team ended up doing some pretty incredible things, right? Because they were fit, because they played a lot. And... So this is a it's going to be a critical component. I also really liked his answer on the profile of the squad changing a lot over the last 12 months. He basically goes on to say it's exciting for us because we love good players, players with capacity and then talent. But we also want people who want to be with us at the club and open to helping the club achieve what we want. And I think part of the summer clear out was you know, not only the sporting directors, but him also establishing like, you know, if this is going to be a brand new project and we're coming off of our worst season in 25 years, who wants to really do this? Because it's going to be hard work, right? It's not going to be easy. And so it's it's a really good answer, you know, that, that we're, we're going to be in this mode now where you have to really want to dig in. You have to want to get better, right? And it's not good enough to just have talent. You have to have the work ethic that that goes along with it. Very, very good points. Again, go watch the full interview on Chelsea's website, on their YouTube channel. Lee did phenomenal work per usual, and we love plugging his stuff. He's such a great supporter of the pod and such a great friend. We, We can't can't not do that for the guy. But look, we'll take our last ad break, and then we got a couple of bits of assorted news talking about medical staff hiring new sponsors and the end of consultancy for interesting elements so stay tuned we'll be right back all right nick rounding this one out we do have a couple of bits of assorted news around the club first one that the daily mail report that chris hughes is going to join chelsea or return to chelsea he's going to be working uh in the medical department uh he's been reappointed um he worked with pochettino at spurs previously he was promoted from chelsea's academy when uh eva canero was dropped by Jose Mourinho in the past. So very, I guess, interesting that we finally have are trying to take the steps forward to resolve the medical and health situation for the players. But seemingly someone who knows the club, knows Pochettino, gets put in this position, just feels like a, not anything groundbreaking, but feels like just a general good news update. Got to get this right. You know, and and I know, you know, Chelsea went through the ringer last year to figure out what the hell was going on with all the soft tissue injuries. And, and so you hope because of the familiarity that Chris Hughes has with Chelsea and he has with Posh that this would be kind of a home run hire. Right. Um, I know nothing about how you scout medical personnel. <laughs> so let's just be very honest and candid about that. But again, the most work you can do before these players really, really hit the training camp mode, right? And go into full training mode, the best, right? Whether that's transfers in, transfers out, staff and personnel, whatever, 
right? Travel arrangements. I don't give a shit. Like these next two weeks are going to be critical before Chelsea leave to get everyone in and on the same page and, you know, get Chelsea in a spot where we're ready to start the season. Unlike last year where we definitely were not. Uh, and so uh, good to see. You know, I'm hoping that this is uh, going to make Poch happy that he's getting one of his guys in and, you know, it's, it's also helpful that Chris has worked at Chelsea before and he knows what Chelsea's all about. Well, things that will also put you at ease are things like a good night's sleep. And you can get that on the road when you stay at a nice hotel chain. Chelsea now have entered into global partnership with Hilton. That's right, Hilton. Though not a kit sponsor, they are now the club's official global hotel partner. There will be events where you actually can use your points. So I looked this up earlier. You can use your points on experiences. So I guess Hilton apparently has an experience platform. So it's experiences.hilton.com where you can use points for those experiences. And right now you can bid around 150,000 points for a VIP or hospitality style experience at the three Premier League summer series dates that include additional bells and whistles to outfit. So if you have been wondering, how do I get a ticket or I don't have money for a ticket, but my work sends me to a lot of places and I get a lot of hotel points. That might be an avenue for you to get a little bit more of an upgrade on your summer tour experience. Uh, Hilton, not a sponsor of this show, but we wouldn't be mad about it. Um, we wouldn't be mad about it at all. Yeah, we, you know, again, it's it's nice to see. I I thought it was going to be a front kit sponsor, which would have been interesting, which I would have been completely fine with. It is not... The sexiest of sponsors, it's not the one that we had at the top of our list, but it would have been fine for, for a season or two. Oh, but I think Hilton would have been great. It's a great logo. A, wow. Not, I was not expecting a great from you on that one. It's a good hotel chain. Good logo. Very simple. Very plain. Not a big three ugly squiggle line through it. I'm great. All right. Well, I guess you're going to be happy with the hotels that I booked for our trip then. Uh, speaking of uh, other things that uh, this was something that started. Now let's talk about something ending. Uh, Gilbert Inoka, who famously uh, led the uh, the All Blacks rugby team, the consultancy relationship between him and Chelsea is no longer in place. So the mental skills coach is uh, that part of the season, that part of our history is just that. It is consigned to a chapter that is now closed, but just was another random bit of news about Chelsea over the past couple of days. Fare thee well, Gilbert. Well, Nick, that is going to do it for this episode. We talked about incomings and outgoings, where the squad stands today. We looked at Pochettino's first day and covered a couple bits of news items. But look, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you a minute to talk about anything else that's on the top of your mind, because it is summer. And there are things going on, and you might want to share something that you're enjoying that is not Chelsea. Yeah, Dan, I'm in I'm in summer tour planning mode. Uh, that that is uh, largely rested on my shoulders to to plan out. So I'm uh, I'm currently working on a lot of that right now, uh, as we are now two weeks away from uh, from that whole experience. But uh, yeah, again, just can't wait to see everyone. Uh, we hope that there is. A lot to talk about as Chelsea begin their USA tour that's coming up. And, uh, you know, for those celebrating today, be safe. Uh, you know, don't blow your fingers off. Do do a job. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. And that's going to do for that. This one, Chelsea fans, so you know what to do. Keep the blue flag flying high.